Hey everyone, it's Claire. So I've been thinking about the coronavirus crises and thinking about how I'm going to manage this myself, but also how I can demonstrate personal leadership and be a role model. And so I've been thinking about this because there's so much crap that's being sensationalized in the mainstream media and social media. Individuals are whipping up the fear and passing on misinformation, whether consciously or unconsciously, and it's creating a sense of panic. So I've been trying to figure out, you know, how can I be a role model and help level out that fear to return to a sense of calm? So I've been thinking about this, thinking, well, who have been my role models? And one of them was my grandmother. So my grandmother, my family members can correct me on this, but I think passed away roughly 23 years ago. But what she left behind is actually something of great privilege that I want to share with you. She actually left some of her memories of the war. And so if you would like to receive some inspiration of how we can overcome this difficult time, I think that we can look at our elders for comfort. And I'd like to share this with you. So I'm going to look weird because I'm going to be looking down reading her journal entries. So don't bother looking at me. Just sit back, relax, and I'd like you to listen to this story. Memories of the War, 1939 to 1945. First, I would like to explain that this journal, if one can call it that, is a tribute to all of those friends and neighbors who were also in the same situation. There are so many memories I could tell and write about. Anyway, one thing I must set straight is my name then was Esther Ship, as I was widowed in the 60s and remarried, remarried to be widowed again after four years. So actually this story is when I was Esther Ship. My first memory is of my beloved husband James being called up on the 1st of September 1939 as he was an army, on the army reserve list. At the time I was 25 years, I was a 25 year old mother with a two and a half year old son and also pregnant with my second child. Standing on Portsmouth town station were a great many more watching soldiers marching to the war. Although many tears were shed, Little did we know what was really going to happen. On the 2nd of September, 1939, us mothers who were pregnant and with young children were, were evacuated to a mansion called The Vine in Hampshire. We had to visit, no, sorry, we had to wait there until the babies were due. Mine was the, sec, the 20th of September, 1939. Then leaving the young ones behind, we mothers went to, the, to another mansion Bramshill House to give birth. It was at the Vine we heard that the war speech of Chamberlain on the 3rd of September 1939. Thinking about it now, I feel sure we had all prayed that we had he had made a mistake. At Bramshill House, it was marvelous. The owners at the time were Lord and Lady Brockett. They treated us as if we were titled people like ourselves. They were godparents to each child born. The memory is so vivid as the day my daughter was born, there was also six boys, so the cook was ordered to bake a special christening cake with my daughter's name Jacqueline named, named in the center and the boys' names around it. All the babies were christened in a private chapel in the house. I often wonder how many of those children lived through the hell that followed. Although the authorities wanted us to stay away from Portsmouth, most of us went back I did try the evacuee scene and was billeted to a rectory in the village of Dunma. It is the same place as the present Duchess of York lived. The reason I left, my son was at an age where he got in, into all sorts of mischief, like ch chasing the chickens and tormenting the cats, etc. We also had to sleep in an attic that stuck, stunk of rotten apples. I am not a fussy person, but at least clean, and although also had a sense of humor, but the lady of the house got me down with her unwelcoming attitude, and so I came back to Portsmouth. Everything did not seem too bad at first. We got the occasional bomber and also gunfire from the ships. I went to stay with my mother and at nights used to sleep in her cellar with my children and also the neighbors. The council had tried to make it as safe as possible. Then the, ter then the terror began after night after night raids. My mother, God bless her soul, was a brave woman. She would not come to the cellar with us. 
On December the 5th, 1940, a lone bomber came across and dropped a bomb on the house opposite to where we lived. The blast brought our house down as far as the passage and my mother got stuck with the front door as she tried to get to us. The dear people opposite were all killed except for one little girl. They were killed by the gas escaping. The man who saved the child was awarded B.E.M. as he laid holding her hand until they were rescued. Also in the next street, a nurse helped deliver twins under a kitchen table and she also got the same medal. When I eventually got out of the cellar, it was a terrible sight. Where neighbors' houses had stood, it was flat, and yet the church stood untouched. When my mother and the others in the cellar went, I do not know. But I do remember running with my baby under one arm and, the, and another child under the other. There was a sailor coming along, and so I vividly remember him telling me to get back to where I had come from, because I had gotten hysterical, and so he got me to another shelter. Even to this day, when I hear the song, Sally, I Still Weep, I think of the, of the little child that was killed. It was that, that time that my husband was stationed at Dorchester, as he was in the Denver Regiment. Some of the soldiers were billeted out, and my husband was sent to Exeter, which was regarded as a safe refuge for the children to be evacuated. Most London children were sent there as well. I decided to take the children down there. It was quite nice, and the landlady was very kind. My husband used to get home when he could manage it. We used to hear the bombers go across to Plymouth, but otherwise it was quite peaceful. I cannot quite recall the date when Hitler decided to bomb the cathedral cities, which included Exeter. All I know is my husband and I were in bed and the sirens had gone on and on. But as we had heard them so often, we took no notice. But all of a sudden I saw what I thought was a firework go by the window. I woke my husband and said, and he said, my God, it's unincendentary bombers. I, sorry, I can't really read her writing 100%, which is why I'm stumbling. So I think it says unincendentary bombers that were dropping. I never waited anymore. I leapt out of bed and picked up my two babies and ran. God knows where I thought I could go. And I can still hear my husband voice telling me, to put some clothes on as there were firemen outside. It may seem funny now, but I was terrified. I went across the road to a neighbor and we sat under the stairs. The men were trying to put out the bombs. Then they dropped the high explosives. And I cannot really make you, anyone believe how awful it was with the sound, etc., and the noise. Anyway, the siren eventually went for the all clear. And when I got outside with my two children, it looked like Dante's Inferno. One part of the street was in flames and the other had been, com been completely flattened. I did not know where my husband had gone, so I took shelter. I looked for shelter and I ended up in Brook Brick Hill, which was really sad as that was where loads of the people that were looking after children were. We only had one night to see each other. Eventually, towards dawn, I found my husband safe. I do not know if you have ever been to Exeter, but the streets are downhill and in the main street were the shelters where the children from London used to go. And you can believe me that they had all been flattened to the ground. Recalling this seems like yesterday. So once more, we had to, f to find somewhere to stay. This will, bit will probably sound funny to you when you read it, but it is true. Offset my husband, children and myself with just two blankets and we caught the train to Oakhampton in Devonshire as my husband's friend had a farm there. Anyway, when we arrived, they offered to take my husband in because he was in the forces, but, he would, but they would not let me or the children stay. By then, the last train had gone back to London, so there was only one field to sleep in. Just as we all got comfortable and wrapped in the two blankets, I could hear galloping noises. It appears we had chosen a field with cows in it, and as I am scared stiff of cows, I was up like a shot. The poor kids and my husband wondered what had happened. I can hear him now saying, what with the bombs and now the cows, where the hell do you think you're going? <laughs> I suggested a field opposite, and you can believe me, we were rolling down the hill half the night. You guessed it, I returned to Portsmouth. At least there was a bit 
of protection with the guns. I do not know if you've ever been to Portsmouth, but it is surrounded on one side by the Isle of Wight and by the other at Pottsdown Hill. It was, a mar it was marvelous what they had done under that place. There were tunnels built with bunk beds in all of them in the hospital. The people used to have to take their own bedding, but at least it was quiet and safe. Many times my sister and I and, and their kids, we would walk past that place, or sorry, to, would walk to that place as we didn't have the bus fare. The doctor asked me to stop going to stay there as the chalk was affecting my chest and, the little, and my little girl, so once more I had to take my chance with the rest. Maybe it was just as well as my mother was ill and so I had to nurse her until she died on the, third, sorry, the 23rd of March, 1943. She was a wonderful, brave person and if I have done as much for people, I would be proud. The saddest part, I think, is that like my beloved husband, she did not live to see the wonderful family of grandchildren and great-grandchildren that I have. And that's the end of her journal. So I wanted to read that to you because quite literally all of us are standing on the shoulder of giants. And so therefore we need to remember what they went to in order to get some perspective on what we ourselves are going through. I hope this story helped. If you have any opportunities to share any stories from your grandparents, I think that'd be wonderful if you could share it. That could provide some resilience and some positivities during this difficult time. Perhaps we can start a hashtag, I don't know, hashtag memories of the war, hashtag keep calm and carry on. I'm not sure, but it's just a thought I have out there is remember we are standing on the shoulder of giants and we will be okay because of that.